Hey guys, what is up? Today we're going to be introducing the concept of the Laplace transform, at least the basic definition, and work in a few basic examples. And then next time we'll move on to a more advanced example using the definition to compute a Laplace transform. So first of all, we got to look at what is a Laplace transform. So a, a Laplace transform is just an operation to change a function into another function. A derivative and an antiderivative, that's similar in that we turn a function into another function using some operation. In this case, differentiation, we would turn x squared into 2x. Whatever that means, we know that that means the limit as h goes to 0, f of x plus h minus f of x over h. Of course, that has a very intuitive physical description of the limit of the secant lines approaching some tangent line, but for Laplace transform, the, the definition is not going to be intuitive at all. Actually, people struggle to understand what this means conceptually, but um, for now, we'll just use it and we'll go with it, and maybe later we'll try to get into conceptually what is the Laplace transform doing for us. All right, so the definition of Laplace transform says that if f of t is a function and it's defined for t greater than or equal to zero, then the Laplace transform of that function is the integral from zero to infinity f of t e to the negative st dt. So that's going to take our function, which is at this point, it was a function of t, and turn it into a function of some other variable. We'll call it s. So this turns it into some function f, we'll call it capital F, of s. So Laplace transform takes our, our function, which was a function of t, and somehow through this integral, whatever that's doing, it's turning it into a function of s. A lot of times this is called the frequency variable. Frequency in that just to the best I'm going to do right now is just to say that if t represents time, then to make this exponential not have any units in it, then this has to be 1 over time, which is generally called frequency. So this s variable can be representing some kind of frequency and in a very abstract sense. So not really going to get into the details of what this s variable represents, but for now we'll just call it the frequency variable. Okay, so this capital F of S is the Laplace transform of little f of t. So that's a common thing we're going to do. We take a Laplace transform of a function f of t, we call it capital F of S. If we take a Laplace transform of a function g of t, we call it capital G of S, and so forth. Maybe if we have like a difference equation, we're taking a Laplace transform of y of t, we'll call it capital Y of S. So that's where we're going to start. So. First of all, before we can take some Laplace transforms, we're going to um, look at a theorem, which is really nice to use whenever we're taking Laplace transform. All right, so the theorem says the limit as t goes to infinity, t to the n, e to the negative st, equals zero. For example, we could see this by using L'Hopital's rule just for the special case t to the first power, just using L'Hopital's rule once. We could rewrite this limit as t over e to the st. Then we would get infinity over infinity, and we would apply L'Hopital's rule. So if we apply L'Hopital's rule to this, we would get 1 over s, 1 over s, e to the st equals 0. So taking derivative of the top just gives me 1. Taking derivative of the bottom with respect to t gives me s, e to the st. So now this, as t goes to infinity, this bottom is going to go to infinity, so this thing overall is going to go to zero. And then you could just imagine maybe doing some kind of induction proof or something like that to just take the derivative each time using L'Hopital's rule. So for like t to the n, you would take n derivatives and eventually get down to 1 over s to the n, e to the st. So then eventually you're going to go to zero regardless of the exponent here on and so that's going to be something we use frequently to calculate our Laplace transforms of polynomials specifically, right? So let's look at some examples here. All right, so we've got an example here. It says find the Laplace transform of the first function f of t equals 1, the second function f of t equals t, and the third function f of t equals e to the 2t. So first of all, we're just going to take the Laplace transform of 1. So Laplace of 1 would be equal to the integral from 0 to infinity, 1 e to the negative st dt. All right, so this is going to equal 
negative 1 over s e to the negative st from 0 to infinity. Now taking the limit, you plug in t goes to infinity, this is going to be 1 over infinity, so this limit is going to be negative 1 over s. Limit as t goes to infinity is going to give us 0. Minus, plug in 0, we get 1. Multiply that out, we get 1 over s. Okay, so that's the Laplace transform of 1. So Laplace of 1 is 1 over s. Now we're not going to try to interpret what this really means, um, but for now we'll just calculate the Laplace transforms, and later we'll try to get to some interpretation of what the Laplace transform tells us. So the second one, we have Laplace transform of t. So part b, Laplace transform of t. We have the integral from 0 to infinity, t e to the negative s t dt. All right, so to do this integral, we have to do this integration by parts. So I'm going to write, I'm just going to write u dv over here. I'm going to do this a tabular integration. So what we do there is just write the u, what we would let u be. Put it over here. Put a 1 and a 0, just differentiating. So differentiating here. e to the negative s t is going to go over here. Integrate this side to so integrate going down this way. Integrate. And over here I'm differentiating. So differentiate. Negative 1 over s e to the negative st. And then I get 1 over s squared e to the negative st. Now when you do an integration by parts like this using tabular method, you put a plus sign, multiply these two, put a plus sign, multiply these two, and put a minus sign, and actually just keep alternating like that. And that's going to give us our integral. So this is going to be equal to, well that's going to be negative t over s e to the negative st from 0 to infinity minus 1 over s squared e to the negative st from 0 to infinity. All right, so now we look at both of these. So we look at both of these terms and we say, okay, as t goes to infinity, where is t e to the negative st going? Well, our theorem says that goes to 0. So this is going to be equal to negative 0 plus plug in t equals 0. I get 0 times 1, which is 0 minus 1 over s squared times e to the negative infinity, that's 0, minus e to the 0, that's 1. So this is going to just be 1 over s squared. So just be very careful plugging in these bounds. When you plug in a bound of infinity, really you're just taking the limit of this function as t goes to infinity. When you plug in t equals 0, well that's just going to be 0 right there. That's going to be 1, so that's just going to be 0. When you plug in infinity here, or take the limit as we go to infinity, e to the negative infinity goes to 0, and then e to the 0 goes to 1. All right, so then we get 1 over s squared. The last example, we said we want to find Laplace transform of e to the 2t. We want to take Laplace transform of e to the 2t, which is equal to integral 0 to infinity, e to the 2t times e to the negative st dt. All right, so this is going to be equal to, we can combine these exponentials, say this is the integral from 0 to infinity. Factor out the t, I'm going to say e to the t times 2 minus s dt. All right, so we integrate that. We're going to get 1 over 2 minus s e to the t times 2 minus s from 0 to infinity. All right, so now I'm actually going to pull a negative sign out of this exponent and make this, and I also pull a negative sign out of this bottom and make it 1 over s minus 2, e to the negative t times s minus 2 
from 0 to infinity. Now plugging in the bounds, take the limit as t goes to infinity, that's going to go to 0, so that's negative 1 over s minus 2. Go in the limit to infinity, I get 0 minus, plug in 0 for t, I get 1. So this is just going to be 1 over s minus 2, and that's our third Laplace transform, e to the 2t Laplace transform is 1 over s minus 2. That's how we do it.